सामने मत करो ना नमस्कार एंड I will be putting you on spotlight, Mr. Gupta, in another two minutes' time after I do the basic introduction. Uh, we are very happy that we have been able to uh, welcome Mr. Gupta and hold these series of webinars on essence of life and growth. In the last eighteen uh, twenty days, I have hosted about eighteen people, and it's a pleasure that I've got new dimensions about essence of life and growth from a positive perspective. they have all shared their life experiences what they have gained what they understand from what i have been requesting them to speak about in terms of life and growth uh, as a mandatory requirement we are observing the requirements uh, advised that by the uh, ministry of home affairs in terms yeah. of conducting zoom meetings and we will be uh, keeping all Body the man. videos audios bulbuda everybody except for mr gupta who will be in the spotlight during the interview which we are going to have after which we will uh, open the house for question and answers so we will keep this session for about 20 minutes 20 25 minutes uh, where i will be asking questions to mr gupta about life and growth and then after which we will open the house for questions from everybody to ask questions and uh, then uh, we will be closing it down uh, please note that anyone who wants to ask a question may kindly raise a hand i will note down their names and then call for them open their mics and videos to ask the question So kindly, towards the end, keep it in mind. I will announce for that I'm going to open the house for five minutes before that, so that you are ready to be switching on and opening up your mics. I would like to introduce that Mr. Gupta has a long career. He has had over 40, 45 years of rich experience working in large number of industries uh, as an executive, as a board member, and also. now as an entrepreneur running these two organizations professor mr gupta has large number of social co contributions as well only a few which i will highlight today he is uh, from technical perspective the chairman of the galaxy ventures private limited and also the chairman of the cafe buddy foods private limited uh, he as i said had for more than 40 years of experience working with large groups like tabar modi lexo apor the uh, board grain sa and large number of french companies on the boards of them he did his uh, management of business administration the mba degree uh, and science and law graduate way back in 1979 and he has been addressing various forums at the iims isbs ncert and hcc in paris which is ncert and hcc are quite famous among the top schools in paris in france Uh, he's also been a board of studies member of the All India Institute of Medical Association. Uh, apart from that, he has also had certain positions at the IMA. Uh, he has been president of GMA, which is a sub body of IMA, a regional body. Uh, he has been president twice, in fact, and this is an elected position between 1997 and 1998, and then again from 1998 to 1999. He has also been the treasurer and the regional vice president of IMA between 1999 to 2000. he is a member an active council member of the indo french chamber of commerce and industry european business group a member there again and towards the social commitment i feel he has been an extensive member of the rotary indian group and has taken the rotary group internationally in the us way back in 1990 as a leader of the group he has been given large number of awards just to name two of them in fact uh, he has been uh, given the award the fellowship of the ima the life fellowship of ima and also the conferred the udyog ratan award way back in 1999 amongst large of numbers of others in any case uh, we would uh, as one of our speakers said it is not the history of speaks but the person himself and my interaction with him have made me a learned person today he is also contributing as a leader of the local resident association of the place where he resides and making things run fairly smoothly these are a brief introduction before we go on uh, mr gupta welcome again and uh, we will be uh, beginning in just one minute we we'll make you in the spotlight so that we can have you in focus and then we will go forward okay mr gupta thank you very much for joining us uh, it's a great pleasure to have you uh, like my other guests and colleagues who have been there uh, i have known him through my father uh, For almost over a decade now, I have interacted with him. But in the last couple of months, I have interacted more with him 
than I did ever before. So it's uh, always such a pleasure uh, to be with him and hearing to his views. Today, Mr. Gupta, as I told you, we're talking about the essence of life and growth. And I would appreciate if you could, you know, highlight as to what do you think of, what do you understand from what life means and what does growth mean? Good morning, uh, Amanji. Thanks for so nice of you introducing me in a very illustrated manner, which I don't deserve. But anyway, good morning to everyone whosoever is listening to me on the uh, this group. And uh, basically, I would like to touch with my experiences, personal experiences in life and the professional experiences in life. First of all, if you see the essence of life, if I say what uh, the Aristotle says and what Andy Fox says, what you know, uh, Bernard Shah says. So obviously, if I uh, say uh, philosophical and socio-economical aspect of essence of life and the life in perspective related to me and the growth, my personal growth as well as the growth which I have seen in the last 40 years about the Indian economy, because I am from the industry, I would like to share my thought process more from the industry side as well as the personal issue. What the Aristotle says, the energy of mind is the essence of life. It's more a philosophical way of doing things. What Andy Fox says, in the fabric of his space of time, you will find the essence of meaning of life. It means whatever you do, it will come to you in future. Uh, but George Bernard Shaw says, life is not about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. It's quite similar to what we say in our Bhagavad Gita. What you do will come to you. You know, work is worship. If you look at it, but I am a firm believer of two things in uh, which I have learned, which is uh, Darwin theory, the struggle for existence and survival of the fittest, and Maslow's need of hierarchy. Probably the other two theories which I have taken very seriously in the life and career, which I strongly feel that the, the, the evolution of mankind, which we say our ancestors was, uh, you know, uh, from uh, monkeys, but the point is we have graduated. It means we have struggled in the life as a species, and then we have come in the age of human being. And that process continuously goes on. I'm not touching more philosophical, you know, uh, if you look at Maslow's in the need of hierarchy, which is very important. If a man is a rickshaw puller in India or any part of the world, maybe in Thailand, his first need is he has to have his physiological need, food, water, you know, basic needs, rest. And after that, the safety needs, the security. Obviously, when we graduate, I'm not going the Dhirin Brahmachari perspective that what is the incarnation or what, you know, Yogi Brahmachari, those, those part of things. I'm talking generally when a person start a beginning of his career or when he has a, he have don't have, in the beginning, he needs physiological need and safety need, which the Maslow says, which is the basic need of a person. I'm touching these aspects because that these aspects are very, in my opinion, very essential to for everyone in the career or in the personal life. Then oh. belongingness and love and need, which is the third need, which comes in the affection relationship. And next is the self-esteem, which is the prestige, feeling, accomplishment. And comes the self-actualization, you know. When we say essence of life, the essence of life for a labor class man who is working in daily need, for him, it is basically a need which he thinks that probably he has to have two, two time meal in a day, which is his basic need, is essence of life. But when a man has, you know, in the very big industries, you know, his essence of life may be, may be self-esteem and self-actualization. Probably he has crossed already three needs and he is in the fourth stage or fifth stage. You know, when we really say, just like, like Gautam Buddha, Gautam Buddha in self-actualization stage, which is the fifth stage crossing fourth stage in the life. So I, what your question is, says Mr. Aman, that growth ship, you know, this is the way I look at it uh, in, the, in, in the human perspective, that these are the uh, realities of life which we cannot ignore and obviously, when we say from where we came, where we, we don't know where from where we came. But the one thing is very sure that we are going to go. Mm -hmm. This is a singular truth in life. Correct. 
so you know you you beautifully pointed out and you segregated the segment also in the sense that or uh, what it means for maybe a worker who is working in your organization or someone who has uh, lived a certain level of convenience is different and uh, you know but you you have been an employee you work with organizations you have uh, now running your own organization as well so we think we have sat on both sides of the table and we have taken the entrepreneurial skill of taking the risk which is key component you know okay. so from that perspective uh, do you think that uh, we can induce certainty in uncertainty when it comes to life and growth what i think probably in the present uh, scenario which is right now going on probably covid 19 and corona whatever so if i look at that perspective because there is very gloominess all over the world in most of the countries probably 60% of people or maybe 80% of people are affected all over the globe <laughs> and and this is a, a major concern as on date but if i look from the positive perspective the growth perspective probably these uh, next 3 4 months will be very settling time into the process settling time means the people will gradually being acclimatized and accommodate with the new socio economic environment which it is going to emerge probably few things will emerge that probably meeting will reduce dramatically more people will be working on video conferencing or telecom uh, you know telecommunication social distancing will increase you know the net banking will go up the demand in my opinion for the next two years the demand overall probably will drop you know if you see consumer demand 15 to 20 percent overall as well as the per capita income will also go till we start sustaining that so this is a temporary phase but temporary phase may go for six months one year or maybe two years this is one oh. but gradually this is going to come up and uh, after that probably india is has a silver lining probably india has a big advantage being the english speaking young people unemployment if you do the swat analysis of a country like us the uh, we have a lot of good opportunities a lot of companies globally would like to uh, move their base manufacturing from china and probably one of the good country with 1.3 billion consumer base with the uh, english as a language with a good legal system probably india india can emerge and will emerge as a good uh, opportunity and uh, this will be a good opportunity for the young people for employment if the government provided the government plays their part very properly having a long experience what what would you say would be the success mantra for tomorrow mm, if i you know uh, in brief i can say when the company start coming to india probably indian company has to be very but open probably the uh, i start with my you know since 1980 when i started my career after doing my management india was a country probably i got a chance to work all over the india traveling because i was heading a company as a sales and marketing with two large brand which i created but when i start traveling 1991 the liberalization started in any economy probably that give a exposure of more than 50 countries and then we realize that we are just beginning still as on date i will see we are just beginning last 20 years from 1991 to 2020 and i you know maybe 25 30 years is just uh, we are just beginning our percentage to the global manufacturing is hardly 2% so if you look at it we are 2% and where the china is 22% in the global economy manufacturing it means we have offer we have a good opportunity if we play our cards properly and if our strategy is clear and if i go a little back uh, in the history also that favors us very well 18th and 19th century was very strong for the europe and us with economic development before the first world war and the 18th century after the second world war with the us support few countries emerged just like japan taiwan south south korea you know those the countries till 1985 they became the manufacturing hub for them for mainly major consumer in the global economy because the east uh, western europe was not europe the gdp was hardly 2 3 4% not much but mm. from 1985 to 2015 china emerged as a global economy probably in terms of manufacturing sector so i feel after this 220 2020 
India, probably India, Philippines, Vietnam, a uh, few countries in the Southeast Asian countries and South America, just like Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, those countries has a good opportunity probably to grow and expand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, reminds me of something I thought I should ask. When you, they, I read a saying which says, don't go through life, grow through life. What do you think about mm -hmm. it on your life experience? Can you, can you repeat your question? Let me, let me think again what you're saying. I read, it is don't go through life. Hmm. Grow through life. Just don't go through life. You have to grow through life. Basically, a few things which probably India needs badly, which is a, a Indian, as an Indian, a, you know, uh, we have a democratic society. Which will and, on a, a civilian perspective, please. Uh, pardon? Not, not from an Indian perspective, because we have people from all across the globe with us. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can just from a general perspective of what you feel, you know, what, what does it mean to you as a person that don't go through, just don't go through life. You have to grow through life. What does that mean to you? From your uh, basi basically, as an Indian, we have to have a latent thinker, probably, which I strongly feel because True. we are very, uh, not very strong in systems and processes, right, which is very strong. We have to be, I, I can give you a relate to an example in China. I set up a plant in China in 1999. And uh, that, are you with me? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Uh, 1999, when I visited first time, we were setting a plant in Beijing, uh, close to Beijing, is about 200 miles from Beijing, Tianjin. And when I talked to the people in China, in the Hilton Hotel, I was staying there. And I asked, you know, the Olympic team is coming for, uh, you know, the Olympic inspection for the China. Then saying the people have been instructed not to burn uh, wood fire for the next four or five days. So I asked the taxi driver, will they follow? He's saying definitely they will follow. And mm -hmm. after the next year, I went again when the China was awarded uh, Olympic. And when I asked, I was going to the factory and he was saying it has been made a mandate by the, for the Beijing that everyone has to, a taxi driver has to understand English. It means mm -hmm. so that before Olympic, they were trying to make the people ready. In a country like communist country, uh, a country like democratic country, probably discipline is also very important for a country like us, which is uh, very, very important. And we have to spend a lot of energy and time and money for the innovation, means the research base. And lastly, but the most important, we have to be pragmatic and positive thinking. I feel these are the few uh, variables which require uh, ingredients to be successful in for, for the individual life as well as for the business or for the country. So, so uh, you know, how does one go about uh, measuring happiness in life? Something which has been a tricky question always. No, happiness in life I was going through probably, I don't know how many people I will show you a book by written by a Chinese. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. probably they are saying because they, they are just trying to maintain uh, and to learn. They did a studies and they were just trying to see what are the most countries where the longevity of the life, the people live more, more than 100, 110 years. And uh -huh. probably they came out with the finding that they, they, they call is a blue zones, five blue zones. Uh -huh. And just like Okinawa in Japan, Sardinia in Italy, Loma Linda in California, Likoya Peninsula in Costa Rica, and Ikaria in Greece. So when uh -huh. they did the finding, so obviously their first finding was there, there has to be a purpose of living. Correct. You know, if you have to be happy, there has to be a purpose of living. True. So if you, you, no one has a purpose, then probably that goes, is not there, you know. And uh, the Japanese especially feel in those cities and the people who live more than 100 years, they never thought of retiring. They think that probably they should devote time where their interest is. They, for them, the retirement is not a word. You know, uh, it is the longevity. So obviously, they have designed certain parameters. Stay active. Do not retire. Take life not very fast, but slowly. Keep smiling. Connect with nature. Mm -hmm. Things um, give thanks. Probably I'll give you an, exa an example here. 
I was in US in 1990. Probably I got a chance to work with a lot of Rotary across the um, about two months with a lot of Rotarians. And India, uh-huh. probably we are a critic society. We don't appreciate uh-huh. the work of someone. But in US, very good, excellent, keep it up. You know, every after every sentence, the Americans put a lot of strong positive connotation to uh-huh. the work, uh-huh. which probably I feel is a very important thing. We have to be a positive thinker. I uh-huh. give example, there's a community in US, which you call Amish. I don't know. A lot of people must be knowing. They are mainly originated from Dutch origin. They uh-huh. start living in, um, you know, Ohio and Pennsylvania region. They don't use electricity. They don't use car. They use bullock cars. They don't allow you to take the photograph. But they have certain, you know, basics, which probably the Japanese also do the same way. And uh, Israel, when they moved, I'll give an example of Israel. They used to work in a kibbutz system. Kibbutz is a, uh, a joint community where they work, they live together, they share their profits, they come, uh, uh, you know, in the difficult time with each other. So I feel these are the few things which can create happiness in your life. Another, which is, we say, uh, an example, a glass is half full or half empty. So if you always mm-hmm. think the glass is half full, or full, full, half empty, or you will not be happy. This is my thinking. Whatever has been given by God, if you think that is good enough for that time, I feel there is a satisfaction level is more important to keep you happy. True. No, I agree with you. But, you know, one thing which puzzles me is always that entrepreneurs take such a big risk in getting it up. And very few people, actually, we had Ashok the other day, uh, who has also been, uh, working in his organization, who has been an executive, uh, working at different levels, senior levels, and then he wanted to take that jump into the sea, take, take, take this risk of life, of you know starting up a new venture, contributing to growth, contributing to people, you know, sponsoring large number of activities uh, in a way, and making his heart happy and more, grow up. Similarly, I feel your journey has been. But so do you really feel that life is inherently unpredictable and unsecure? You know, after so many long years of working on a safer side and a riskier side now? So obviously, you know, it is not happening first time, probably in 1990 when the plague came, you know. Uh, it was also before the, at the time of First World War. In 1980s also it happens, you know, pandemic all over the world, obviously. That is a, you know, when you, uh, when we say in R&D, when you do the clinical trial for a uh, medicine, probably, and there's some, uh, another, you know, uh, the whole aura environment is full of bacteria and microbes, which is a inculcation of uh, the human being, how it has been developed, evolution, which, uh, you know, uh, uh, Darwin theory says. But if you look at it, I don't know, a few people have seen a movie, Super 30, I don't know, Super 30 has seen the movie where a man in Bihar is being shot by Rithik Roshan, his Indian uh, actor, and he has got admission after study and his father was a postmaster and uh, studies in, um, in uh, a university in uh, uh, UK, but he was not able to go due to the paucity of funds. Then he thought, let me, uh, Cambridge, sorry, Cambridge. So probably he was not able to join Cambridge. And he thought, let me go and teach uh, the students here. And his objective was satisfaction by teaching them. So obviously his main objective was education and teaching. He was not always looking at making money. So obviously a contentment when you say, probably if you have seen uh, the old story that if you get the money, what you will see, I will go and enjoy the beach. You say, why don't you enjoy the beach today? Why you are wanted to earn the money? If you have to do ultimately the same thing. So obviously the life, it is very difficult and uh, very unjudgmental. What you have to achieve probably uh, is a vicious circle you know really. I feel this is a billion dollar question, what you wanted to really achieve in life. True. You know, today I was reading the speaking tree and the title of the speaking tree intrigued me, which says, celebrate life. So it did talk about, when I talk about essence of life and growth, this particular topic did hint on celebrating life, you know. So what are those things you think uh, are essential for getting us to celebrate life? You know, appreciate what God has given us and celebrate it in the true sense. 
I, I'll give you an example of my life. Probably in 1986-87, probably I was traveling. I was one day in Varanasi. And when I was in Varanasi, I was staying in Hotel Taj. Uh, hotel, uh, Taj Hotel in... Uh, nee, Clark Hotel in Lucknow, in Varanasi. There's a Hotel Clark group. And uh, there, that time it was not 1985-86. There was not much of uh, taxis was there. So I came out from the hotel and I talked to the rickshaw guy, you know, I think uh, he was laying at about two o'clock below a tree uh, in a very relaxed manner. And I told him, will you would like to go up to the main market? He's saying, no, no, I'm done for the day. I asked him why done for the day. He's saying, no, no, I have whatever I want to, then I have taken. You will not believe I have offered him because there was no rickshaw in summertime, five times money, but he was not willing to go because he thinks that he's satisfied for that day. It is a perspective how you take on. A lot of people who have wealth, tremendous wealth, they think what will happen oh. after Corona, but a lot of people uh, who don't have the money and they even don't know for tomorrow, they are not much worried. So obviously the mental state of mind was they think and how, what you're upbringing. One interview I can say, I have seen about 15 years back of Shah Rukh Khan. He says in the interview, that the fear is what you have if you don't have tomorrow. That is the fear. Obviously, the satisfaction comes from fear which you have. Okay. Uh, you know, we are living in challenging opportunities and you talk about the fear and uh, there is a lot of fear, dissentment, negativity which has been going around. But I see it as challenging opportunities, you know, because you need to rework it out and as most speakers have said, there is nothing like failure. You need to grow through it. So how do you think, you know, having lived 30, 40 years of your work life, seen different phases of life, what, how do you see that we can ensure sustained growth in these kind of challenging opportunities take time? I feel, I strongly feel because uh, I got a chance to work with the Indian government very closely, uh, you know, last 40 years. And probably got a chance to set up companies in uh, Zibalali in 1993 when Zibalali was started in Dubai, then in Egypt also, in Sri Lanka also, in a number of countries. But the point is, the basic thing is, when I told it, positive thinking, a little thinking. The mindset of probably India has a very big opportunity ahead of, ahead of us, you know, for the next generation, for the young people. And I will say it's a very, very positive. Corona is not a impediment for the for the temporary is a temporary phase i give example in 1995 i was in israel setting up a plant in nepal mm -hmm. and i was visiting a company uh, there and i was having a meeting with the lawyer there for drastic agreement and when i was going the plague was there in 1995 india if you re remember you know and gujarat and a lot of uh, cnn was giving on television a big queue in the gold market for homeopathic medicine you know mm -hmm. here and that was a very big fear going around in the country that and the flights may cancel from coming outside from India to India, which happened now, but that was a fear of that time also. So obviously, uh, I feel uh, there will be some solution. I'm sure about that, probably, you know. Uh, it may take some time, but there has to be some vaccination or some uh, something which will come and uh, that will be there. But I feel the positive side of India, I was traveling to uh, Dubai in 1985, uh, 1995 with a, a politician in the flight. And he's saying, Mr. Gupta, what is the problem in India? You know, we have so many population in the country. But when I told him, why don't you think we have so many hands in the country? If you have 1 billion, then you have 1.2 billion hands to work with. So I feel, why don't you look at the positive side as opportunity, which other countries, China has very well, you know, um, take an advantage of that. So if I start telling you, which knows by everyone, we have 1.3 billion people, we have a big consumer base, we have a growing middle class, 65% of people has led off less of 35 years, literacy is 35%, you know, right. if you end the growth, uh, you know, population growing by 1.2%, which is pretty high, we are adding one Australia every year in the country. So if you can right. think a population of one Australia adding Every day in India, every month, in every year in the country, it means you have a big opportunity. It is a matter of how to harness that, how to strategize that, how the mm -hmm. government thinks and, uh, you know, modulate 
uh, this situation i give example you know uh, of economy of malaysia i don't know how how many people know the malaysia economy was totally dependent on rubber natural rubber about 60 years back when the synthetic rubber came the malaysia as a government decided to strategize that the natural rubber will die down gradually the production and the cost will not be very effective then they have changed the, with the environment with the agronomy to the palm oil plantation and uh, the mm -hmm. world over 90% of the palm oil comes from malaysia and the whole economy 80% is dependent on palm oil it is a matter of strat strategizing the india is not a country is a continent if you look at it, the tropical climate at the same time you have different climate so if you wanted to develop goa as a tourism chatisgarh as a mining you know uh, then we have to think we want to do everything in every state i feel this is something just like in uh, las vegas you know uh, las vegas is a total desert area so obviously they have developed an american government that let us try to develop as a uh, casino or gambling or tourism spot and earn the economy yes. there so i feel these are the few things has to be taken care mm -hmm. uh last three four questions from my side before we open the house and i will request if you can give short answers so that then we can have more time for the other participants to ask questions uh, you know is life all about money or all about power in your opinion you know it depends i have told you probably i want to reiterate again if you go and tell a guy who is a worker he saying life the money is everything but a person when you go to a very big industries i would not like to name is saying money is everything no they will say mental satisfaction is more important so i still i refer which is a very relevant theory maslow's need of hierarchy at what stage probably a lot of people get confused in my opinion then they start life is incarnation life is self satisfaction life is self achievement but a guy a person who is earning every day for him these are all jargons is not a reality because he cannot think on those lines but he is also in 1.3 billion people you have 70% people are from that it means you have about 1 billion people are looking that way in india so obviously we cannot think that we have a self satisfaction money is important or not money is definitely important for a lot of people and i feel happiness comes from money in economic situation because in a, a you know in the present uh india i'm talking mm -hmm. uh you see, this is my way of thinking. yeah go ahead please you were saying something this is my way of thinking correct correct uh you know uh, various governments have taken various decisions i'm not talking of covid i'm not talking of current scenario again i'm talking in general for the last 10 15 20 years a uh, large number of problems have surfaced up jobs unemployment uh, growth uh you know then slow downs then me to movements one after the other something or the other has been popping up then there has been tsunamis which have come in the last 15 20 years so one thing or the other has been popping up fires in the forests in different countries now governments have been trying to resolve and bring out solutions and you are much aware about it now what should you what do you think the government should do more both indian government and other governments as well to have a smooth induction of growth and happy living i feel if you uh, if you look at it you know a lot of people say americans has a lot of money in the last 40 50 years and very happy you know uh, one is uh, i give you example probably uh, the thinking because india is a, a socio economic uh, front you was you say you know uses pseudo capitalist you know we were not capitalist also we are not communist also socialistic pattern of society which has been incepted after the independence in india sure. and the people at large who are the bureaucrats or the government they think any person because i have seen both the sides you know i have started my career at the age of 23 and i was ceo at the age of 33 in 10 years from management trainee to ceo of a company very large size company i have worked there then i have as an entrepreneur i have seen but the people think that a person who is setting up a factory or industry or a business it means he is a rich man which is not really true as on date people don't know what are the problems with him what are the liabilities with him what are the bank loans are with him because this mindset has to be changed in the government in the people at large this is number 
because the people who are setting up a factory i keep on talking uh, in the last uh, one and a half months a lot of people are really in trouble the consignments are not going the labor is a problem the labor has migrated you know this is number one so it means if we have to grow i give an example when i set up a plant i am going to give a comparison because i got a chance to work with a lot of globally and do, did a lot of joint ventures from i did joint ventures from japan i did from joint ventures from spain i did from france with number of countries i interacted if you look at it i went set up a plant in 90 2005 when tsunami was there in sri lanka mm -hmm. you will not believe i went with a briefcase and uh, the our partner was murli dharan uh, who is a bowler in sri lanka you will not believe there is a board of investment i went to the board of investment i had a meeting with them and the land was allotted to me in next two days three days all permission was granted and that was a single window clearance mm -hmm. and there is a world trade tower there is office of uh, boi board of investment so i can very well say what we say in india single window clearance is nothing there as such but i was able to see this this about 15 years back in sri lanka in colombo this is the point number 1 the same thing when i set up a plant in zabel ali in dubai 1994 was developing and the the government was very cooperative and everything was done so it means the mindset of the people has to be changed and uh, i feel this is most important if we really wanted to grow and harness the opportunity which probably the china will vacate and will be vacating there's no doubt because you know i have interacted uh, the last 15 days lot of companies globally probably mm -hmm. i am in touch with them lot of people wanted to come to india but the point is they they think that you are too much of bureaucracy and takes too much of time so we have to have happiness we have to create employment we have to give uh, employment for the young generation probably i feel uh, strategically consciously we have to change our uh, not the policy but execution process execution process is very bureaucratic it has to be changed this is very clear if we want to catch the bus i feel is a is a matter of catching the bus the bus will be there if you want to catch as a government you can catch and you have to strategize very simply and you have to think and execute it this is how i look at it yes uh, my last question for today second last question in fact uh, one is that uh, you know you seen the growth projections made by various agencies worldwide in fact the modi also reduced the growth projections recently but the imf uh, has kept it in between uh, the the growth projections for india have ranged between 1.7% for 2020 that is calendar year 2020 to about 4% with adp around 4% other agencies around 1.7 imf said said 1.9% and for calendar year 2021 that is january to december 2021 imf says 7.4% for india do you think these estimates being from the industry you've seen what's going on do you think these estimates are conservative in nature or they are too optimistic in nature what's your opinion i feel as india we are fundamentally missing two points a people at large also and industry also as well as the government also when we say india is a agrarian economy it means about 76% people are 65% people 70% people are working uh, dependent on agriculture but agriculture contributes to only 18% of the gdp and while the manufacturing is 18% 16% and service sector is 15% so oh. i asked the same question with minister uh, mr jetley about uh, four years back that suppose in the it sector there is a dip in the global market even one or two percent can you think what sort of unemployment will be created in india probably this is a big issue one has to make a very clear strategy that probably agriculture is a very thrust area and manufacturing probably i think that if we play properly this a 2% global market uh, which we are in the in manufacturing probably we can inch it clearly to 10% we cannot go 22% like china but we can take 10% which will be huge and our manufacturing which is giving 60% 16% manufacturing this will jump to clearly to 30 or 35% or maybe 20% 25% in the total gdp and agriculture another area the government we are we have to take help of drip irrigation tissue culture hybrid seed i have seen is israel is a big technology available there and if the government makes a first probably it is a very probably it will be a, a global we have a very good climate only two two three country just like brazil you know 
has a good good climate. The India has a good climate, the you know, tropical climate. So I feel it can be emerge as a very. And I don't feel that of of this COVID is going to make big big difference in economy with the two reasons because our is still the economy dependent on agriculture. It's no, we are not like China. We are not like uh, Europe. We are everything is on manufacturing. Uh, we are mainly in uh, servicing industry, which we can very well do it. Just like uh, you know, we very strong area. Just healthcare is another area which can emerge as a big opportunity. Uh, health healthcare services and uh, agriculture. Correct. No, I, I fully agree with you on that aspect. And my last question before I open the house for others to ask questions. I see a lot of hands up. I almost about twelve people who have noted down with who want to ask a question. And uh, I will begin with uh, Miss. No, I I would like I would like to sum up Aman one thing probably. Uh, can, can you give me a time time to yes, conclude yes, it? Yes. I, I will, but I, I have a question before I ask that. I just let them, let them people know who are going, who I'm going to ask the question so that they okay, are ready. Okay, okay, oh, sure, sure, sure. I will be asking question to Miss Alang, Miss Pooja, Sambal Gupta to ask a question. After that, Mr. Vishwanath Borse, and then Mr. Santosh Kumar. So these three people I'll ask before. Then I'll take go to the other rest. Before to that, uh, my last question for you is: What is your advice to the youth and the students who are the tomorrow of the nation? I feel uh, the youth should be positive. This is one point because everything starts from the mind. Probably when you do something, you have to stimulate mind. Number one, you have to have a positive thinking, a lateral thinking. Lateral thinking. What do you mean? Means because we are being taught to think in a single line. But I feel always we should look at possibility alternate. As an Indian, we are used to think laterally because uh, and. Uh, 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 and more research based more research based means a lot of startup you see every day is coming so a lot of youth is looking not as a job but as a opportunity as a startup but i would like to say one thing more you know uh, i still remember in 1991 when the indian op mr manmohan singh uh, as a finance minister opened the economy in 92 you know uh, liberalization so lot lot of people saying and uh, you know mckinsey as well as uh, boston consulting has started putting you know india will be the fifth largest economy and blah 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 and the same thing was being predicted for brazil also you know couple of years back but when i said i was involved in a acquisition in a plant in brazil i have seen in 1996 when i was in angatuba this is a place we are having a factory in sao paulo i have seen in the evening the banks were looted you know the inflation was every day 15 20 25% we bought a company in competition with neslo mio Uh, is the polingi was a brand so i feel and the same thing happened in hungary poland and czech republic so what i want to say we should be positive thinking but we have to very very careful i don't want a situation i give a, conclude with a giving an example you know uh, is an anecdote i don't know a lot of people must have heard um, we are very bullish we should be very bullish but you know uh, uh, the horse should fly i i give example you know Uh, Akbar, you know people. Uh, Akbar was a king, and he has sentenced one of his um, uh, secretarial people that he should be hanged till that he has that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he was being asked, "What is your last wish?" He saying, "I want to meet Birbal." Mm -hmm. So what say? Okay, let him go and meet Birbal. How does it matter? So he went to meet Birbal, and he has told me Akbar has sentenced me to death. And can you help me? So he told, like Birbal told, why you are worried? He's saying Akbar has asked me to hang. So saying, okay, I can tell you. You go and tell Akbar. Akbar is a very fond of horses. So he recently yeah. bought a stallion horse. You go and tell him that probably you can teach horse flying. So he's saying, what does it mean? I can't fly. Saying you tell, and Akbar will agree. He's saying fine. So he went to the Akbar. Then what will happen? He's saying. in the two years time you can die on your natural death then you are not being hanged akbar may die it means if akbar dies then again you are not being executed thirdly the horse may die to the natural death then probably you can say you know horse has died and fourth you never know the horse may fly so probably it's not like that we have to make a very rigorous and continuous effort the horse will not not fly automatically we have to make sure that it flies 
thank you thank you now uh, i it seems that ms pooja gupta is not there because i'm trying to open a video but she is not able to open up but then i have others who are there uh, i see tejasvini uh, dongare if i sorry if i pronounce your name wrongly please uh, mr tejasvini and dongare if you may i just unmute you if you can ask your question and uh, then not and then please close the mic and video after you ask your question Mr. Jaffney, we don't have a piece. You wanted to ask a question. Uh, can we go to uh, the next person who wanted to ask a question? Uh, there was. Uh, I did see Junzo Watada. Junzo, Junzo is here. May I request Junzo to ask his question? Okay. Uh, yes, thank Junzo. you very much, uh, Mr. Pradeep Gupta. Yeah. Uh, very nice chance to hear you are talking. I'm uh, quite interested in Indian history, culture, and economy. Uh, you are quite near uh, to the present government. I'm not sure you can answer uh, the openly. Uh, I think uh, you told me, I asked uh, several questions. Uh, first is, you, in your talking, you, you mentioned 1985. Is this uh, quite an important year for India? Do you understand? 1985. Yeah, you used to tell the several times that you mentioned 1985. No. Uh, not like that. Yes. Not like not like that. Only not not very not, fast now. No, nothing, 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 nothing as such. Nothing, nothing so important. Else. Okay, okay. So the, to know I would like to ask one question about the past, Indian past. We Japanese understand India was a social country, right? Uh, you told the democratic, uh, yeah, it is correct, but uh, I think socialism uh, made India delayed from development. How do you think about uh, socialism in the past? Is it uh, good? It was good? For India, you know, India selected uh, the social socialism in the past. Social probably India social bonds are very strong. Are you able to hear me? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. I can hear. I can hear. Indian social systems are very strong. If you look at it, India was being invaded after the Indus Valley civilization by uh, Mongols, by mm -hmm. Chinese, by you know Arabs, mm -hmm. by you know, Iranians, it was being invaded, but it's still Indian has a, his own culture, just like Japanese. I got a mm -hmm. chance to work with two companies. One was the mm -hmm. Yakult Hansa, you know, Yakult, mm -hmm. you must be knowing in Japan. Mm -hmm. So I had a first meeting with them in Yakult in 1995 in Ginza, their headquarter mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. uh, in Tokyo. And mm -hmm. another joint venture I did with a Shikibo Daiga, you know, mm -hmm. we make textile printing thickness in Osaka. Mm -hmm. so probably India is also very strong, like Japanese or Chinese has their, their you know, their social system. So mm -hmm. obviously, uh, that is keeping them bind and they have very strong affinity with their families and relationship. So I, mm -hmm. I feel very proud and very strong that India's social system is very good. I feel that is your question. Okay, okay. but uh, for me, uh, for Japanese, India was uh, closed, not open in socialism. They do not uh, be uh, open their country at that time. Uh, like China, China could not uh, develop well after opening the economy, then quickly developed. It is the same in India. When India opened the society, then Indian economy uh, be developed very fast. Uh, how do you think? I feel yeah. I, full, I, will, I full, fully agree with you. 
Uh, uh-huh. There's no doubt because the China opened up in 1985. I feel that may be the relevance of 85 uh-huh. in China uh-huh. economy uh-huh. open. Did sound that? Uh, and Indian Did economy, o- yeah, 80, 80, 80, 1, 82, and uh-huh. Indian economy opened up in 1992. We were uh-huh. about 15 years, 10 years behind, you know, uh-huh. uh, China. And uh, secondly. Uh, chinese was a, is a communist country communist means whatever you decide everyone follows mm-hmm. india is a democratic country it means mm-hmm. everyone has a right to speak and express his views mm-hmm. and obviously we have a parliamentary form of government mm-hmm. there always is opposition so opposition keeps on moderating the decision making process of any government just like us So obviously okay. you have to take a, you know a big population along with you. You cannot be a dictator. You have to be democratic leader. So I feel uh, which takes little more difficult in implementing. Number one, number mm-hmm. two, uh, I I fully agree that probably India, uh, if we still we feel very if we put a very strong strategy in place, India can do much much faster. And if we take country along with probably it is a. more a maturing the process mm-hmm. we are not that matured okay. in economy and development decision making may i ask I, I, uh, the uh, next question future yes. of india india has uh, 70% of agriculture in gdp yeah. and uh, industry is uh, 26 and yeah. india has a strong connection with europe united states and the arabic league Yeah. Not to Japan, quite a small way to Japan, uh, both import and export. So, how do you think about uh, Indian future? Uh, Indian, uh, especially, to... especially industry. Uh, I, I give you. A... India has uh, air uh, aircraft, satellite. Uh, to oh. The overall industries are covered, but how do you think about the future? I I I feel that just like after the Second World War, if you re- mm-hmm. recall, you are from Japan. Mm-hmm. The Chinese goods which was being made in Japan was mm-hmm. not of very good quality, you know. Mm-hmm. But when the U.S. start giving technology, the Japan becoming a became a, a, a manufacturing base, you know, just like Panasonic. Lot of company came, Japanese companies. and the technology was being provided initially with the americans which japanese developed with the kaizen you know and uh, six sigma and all that sort of thing probably mm-hmm. and the same technology was given from to china also from us the same technology was given to korea from us south korea mm-hmm. the same happened in taiwan so economic development was in those countries where the cost of labor was less number 1 number 2 there was a big opportunity and number 3 they were not having not having technology and i feel india is right now in that stage we are number of labor low, low low labor cost but if country like japan just like us just like italy or france start giving technology and start make manufacturing base in india it is a big future not future is a big future probably in 19, in my opinion probably in 2030 in next 10 years if we move everything properly or 30 or 35 India will be the fourth largest economy. I what I am saying is probably be, and the global economic perspective will change after this COVID. You know the economic power will change, you know, economic balance will change, which probably will come to know in the next four five years. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Thank I had really much. nice meeting and probably probably yeah. I will give give my number to you email ID <laughs> to Aman okay. and he can pass it to you. So probably okay. anything you can Please mail it to me will apply. Aman. He knows my email. Uh, very nice yeah. uh, the talking. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Mr. Pradi. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I am now open to Ashok. I see Ashok around here as well. Uh, Junjo, in any case, is a professor, an old friend of mine. It's been known for 20 years as well, and he's been at the university before. He's the head of the department there, dean, and then now he's currently with Petronas University in Malaysia. Now, for that was for the participants who were there. Yeah. Ashok. Who is again another entrepreneur, a person who I've admired a lot, and he has been there two days back with me here. I'm happy to see him here. Ashok, you want from an entrepreneur to another entrepreneur? Some question there. Sure. Thank you, Aman. Uh, Mr. Gupta, thank you very much. I think it's a wonderful what you said. 
Thank you. I, I fully agree with what you just said. You know, the COVID-19 gives the unique opportunity. It put a stop to everybody. Like a, I see the checkered flag in a uh, car, a racing car. On, on a car uh, or a checkered flag, everybody stops. So it's a unique opportunity for India to move ahead. But only my concern is that, because I got a company here. I mean, I got a company in US here. And the only concern is that we have to, the technology will going to change, our behavior will going to change. And we have to think differently. Our employees, and you, you made the point a uh, few minutes ago that we have to do something different. So wh how, what are the things you can do? What are for top one, two, three, four to be change your behavior compared to a new opportunity coming in? It's going to be it's a huge opportunity coming in, but, but we have to, we cannot do the old way we did a business. What are you can do? One, two, three. Think you can do. I, I'll give you two examples, one on the technology and one on the thought process. Technology, probably uh, two examples very lively, probably. I was a strategic head for a group, uh, which you know, Dabar in 1993, yes. I was heading there. So I was talking to an Israeli company because we are making honey. Uh, honey, we were uh, used for asthma, you know, you, when you put some medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, and mix it and eat it, it reduces your asthma. So I went to a company, Lapil, Lapil in Israel, and one of the kibbutz in uh, Jerusalem. And they say, we make uh, honey. I told him we make honey and we do this also. He's saying we also make honey, but we don't mix. We feed the herbs to the bees. And when they produce honey, that is good for asthma. I'm giving you a technological difference. The another company we make, you know, there's a company you must be looking at, you know, American company who makes a toothbrush with a battery. You know, must have seen a battery, battery with brush, yeah. toothbrush. The uh, Israeli company BioBrush started a company who put a very small mechanical tool inside a brush. When you put it, the brush rotates and it cleans your teeth. So I'm giving you two examples, very, very well done. So when a Israeli and Jewish think, always this first thing is, what is different? When you talk to any company, they say, what is different? So if you want to say me product, make it, they say, no, no, no. It has to be something different, number one. I feel that approach has to come in the mind that what is new we are trying to do. If you are trying to do the same thing everyone is doing, then who is going to buy my product? So they are always market driven consumer driven, innovation driven, right? I feel there is the thought process which has to come. I'll give you an example. Secondly, you know, there's a feeling of fear and there's a feeling of poor poverty. You know, India is a poor country. We don't have money. Always the politician says the same thing, bureaucrats the same thing, and public says the same thing. But we never think, I give example, I was talking with the minister, was going to go have a meeting with the, he was saying, you know, so many people to feed all the time, we will cribbing, I'm using a word cribbing, we have so many people to feed. I have seen in Thailand, a small and cottage scale industry, I have seen in Vietnam, they give work just like a big example of Nirma, is a very good example of Nirma or, you know, lizard papar, you know, a small and medium enterprises. The same thing is being done by so many countries in South, Southeast Asian countries. Nirma was giving lab lilyl benzene and soda, putting in the bag, giving to the village, uh, ladies every day in the Ahmedabad city. And in the evening, Vikshawala coming and taking the packets from them. So India also have a lot of innovation, good advantage. But it's a matter of thinking. And I feel India was, is a controlled economy. Everything has, major change has to come from the government. Again, I'm repeating government. And third time, I'm repeating government. So the government has to think. The people are very willing to do it and everyone is willing to go and along with the government, cooperate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Ashok. I now uh, go to IC again, uh, Ms. Pooja Sambad Gupta. I'll unmute her. I think her video is not working. Ms. Pooja, if you can ask a question, please. Ms. Pooja Gupta, can you kindly introduce yourself and ask a question? Uh, there is another one. I take this last one because there are too many questions. But then I have to close it at one, and I would like to do that. Uh, Nita Madhwani, uh, I am unmuting you, please. If you can ask your question, Miss Nita Madhwani. Miss Nita Madhwani, if you can ask a question, please. Uh, I see one more. We'll take this last question. As I said, Nita Wadwani seems to be disconnected or not being able to ask. Uh, I unmute Ms. Priyanka Singh. I see her as well. Uh, just a second, madam. Please go ahead. Please ask your question. And please introduce uh, yes, yourself. Ask your yeah. question. Uh, good afternoon, sir. This is Priyanka Singh. Uh, my question is related to the today's situation which is happening in India. Right now, the um, people are dying. Uh, is it audible? Could yeah, yeah. Say? I'm able to hear you. Uh, right now, the people are dying because of their basic needs rather than uh, this COVID-19. So, what is your uh, like opinion? What the people should do on this situation, and what will be the future of India? I somehow feel uh, that people are not not dying with the starvation. Please, I will I will prove it. Right? It is all you know. If a person go to the villages, you know. Village, you have a community feeling. They take only chapati and piyaz and they eat and they can survive. So it's not that people are not able to, they are dying with the food. No, it's not like that. Maybe hardly one or two cases somewhere, but at large it is not happening. It is more created that people are dying. It's not like that, number one. And number two, I feel the government is taking very uh, good measures. I will really appreciate uh, and somehow I strongly feel that we should continue for some more time. This is my personal view so that we try to protect as much as we can do the people. When you see the lines, I was talking to some administration people that whenever someone wanted to distribute on road, a lot of people who have food for the next 10 or 15 days at home, they can cook and make. But when something is free, they come on the road and make big crowd. So it is a feeling that people are dying with the food is not happening really. Maybe I cannot say one or two people but at large is not happening. And secondly, social distancing is a very important issue in the present context, which government is, and I fully endorse and agree with that, that that is the only way because we are, we don't have much of uh, medical resources as a country for 1.3 billion people. So obviously there has to be a method which probably we have to be a literal, literal, literal thinker, means how we can protect ourselves without damaging country uh, minimum, you know, the damage should be the minimum. So our approach should be like that. It's not necessary what someone is copying in other country, we copy the same. It's not that, but what is good for us, we should try to do that. Thank yes, you. thank you. There is a lot of uh, requests. I have almost about 10 names here, but uh, maybe because of technicality, a couple of them were not able to connect today. Uh, when wanting to ask questions. Aman, I will, I will, if you can, I can tell, uh, you know, if someone wanted to send me the question, I can give my email ID to you. Or yes, maybe, P, uh, I can tell uh, everyone, if you want, on this, and they can send it my personal email ID if they want some question. If you can say your ID, then maybe then they can. Yeah, yeah, I, I can. It's pkg1956 at yahoo.com. Aman, can you repeat them? That's a good one. You said pkg1956. One nine five six at gmail.com. No, at yahoo.com. Sorry, I'll repeat that again. It's pkg1956 at yahoo.com. You may kindly send your questions to him directly and then he would certainly respond to them. Uh, please check your spam folder because even Gmail emails are going to spam folders these days. I got an email from All India Radio the other day for a program which they interviewed me for. 
and that also was lying in the spam folder. So mm -hmm. I would request everybody. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being here. I am I'm happy to inform you that tomorrow we have yet another great speaker who will be coming here today to agree with us. She is going to be from Sweden. It's Osa who is going to be speaking tomorrow as a formality which has been told to me to be done for all uh, programs I thought I should do. Uh, so Osa is, uh, has worked with the UN institution, the World Economic Forum, and currently running a consulting firm working for almost 55 countries through a consulting firm. Uh, she would be here with us tomorrow from 12 to 1. And the next day from then, I would have uh, Mr. Professor Dr. Akram Brahmindov, who is currently the director of the institution which teaches government officers. Like we have the Indian Institute of Public Administration in India throughout the country. He is the chief of that. He has been a vice minister in Foreign Affairs Ministry and he has been rector of the Banking and Finance Academy. Uh, and I have known that gentleman also for almost 20 years when I was invited in Uzbekistan to address the Uzbekistan parliament way back in 2002. So I thought I'd just close with this. So tomorrow we have from Sweden and then from Uzbekistan. And today we had a dynamic entrepreneuring, uh, you know, industrialist here, a person with a humble mind stall who has been working for the social cause within the community and even outside. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. thanks. Thanks, Thank Thanks a lot. Thanks, Avan. Everyone. Thank you everyone for joining us.